guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And what I got here is the Carl Zeiss Loxia 35mm f2 Biogon lens. And um, it's extremely high quality. It's top of the line. It goes for about 1300 US. And it's fully manual. So you physically have to, you know, turn stuff here. And it feels really good. It's dampened nicely. Has a lot of nice feedback to it. It has a lot of turn though. Notice how far you have to turn it. That's one way, and I'll bring it all the way the other way. So it makes it easy to adjust fine tuning, but it is a little hard to focus overall, um, but focus peaking helps. And the aperture here, you can see, also has a nice dampening to it. It's a little bit easier than the focus ring as far as turning it goes. So being a Biogon lens design, what it has is nine elements in six different groups. So it results in a pretty compact design when you factor in the mirrorless camera it's designed for, like the Sony a7R. And what I have on here now is the 50 millimeter f1.4 rocker lens. <clears throat> and you can see how this compares, you know, in size, roughly. It's very close. The old school lens itself is a little smaller, you can see, because it was made for the SR mount. But with the adapter, it actually is significantly larger. So I'm just going to put that over here. So, I just wanted to show you that quick. I'll mount that up in a second. I just want to go over the rest of this lens. So, what we have here, it's got an aperture of f2 to f22. And, it's, like I said, it's really well made. It has the T, the Zeiss T lens coating on there, which is the latest and greatest anti-reflective coating. So, it's a weather-resistant lens mount gasket is what they're calling this. And, it feels like a good quality rubber to me. The uh, weight of this lens, it, it actually go, comes in at three quarters of a pound, or 12 ounces, or 340 grams, and um, you know, it's pretty heavy. It's not too heavy though. So we have on the front here, it's a 52 millimeter thread, if you want to mount a filter on there. And the minimum focus distance, which I'll show you, is 11, about 12, millimeter, uh, 12 inches, almost a foot, 30 centimeters. It's an all metal barrel here, and this stuff's engraved, these numbers and scales, it's all engraved, which is nice. Now, another thing I wanted to show you, which is important, is this has a de-click feature on it, so you can hear how the aperture clicks. Hear that? So then right here, on the top, there's a screw. Here, It's right there, and notice how the dots are lined up. And when the dots are lined up, that means that you have, you know, the clicking on. So there's a little tool. Let me just show you this real quick. In the box here on the side, let's move my camera over. Right here on the side of the box, there's a little, where the warranty and whatnot is, there's a little bag, and it comes with this tool. Check this out. It's like a little flathead. And, it, and just be very careful when you do this. Basically, you put the tool in, and you just turn 180 degrees and that turns the de-click feature off. And now you can see the little dot is 180 degrees to the right. And the aperture will be nice and smooth. See that? It's not clicking anymore. Lens a little bit. See the aperture opening and closing? Nice and round too, by the way. I prefer it clicking though for photography. But for video, that's a really nice feature. And it's built in. So even though this is a fully manual lens, it has the electronics built in, so it will transfer the EXIF data, which is nice, you know, like aperture and things like that. So when you're in Lightroom or another program, you'll be able to see that. Blue dot to the white dot, mount it up, and then it like crushes on, watch. And you can just see how tight that is. So it's certainly going to help with weather sealing. So mount it up to the A7R. <clears throat> That's what she looks like. Yeah, notice right here, when I have the Loxia lens mounted, you can see it's f2. And when you turn the aperture, see how it changes on the camera. But notice here how the aperture doesn't say, doesn't say anything. It's just blank right there. F blank, <laughs> blank, blank. And it looks really nice in my opinion. It feels good. It's not too heavy. You know, it's got a real nice feel to it and size, and especially when you're going to focus and stuff. So another thing I want to show you is the lens hood. This can mount either way. 
and it turns on there and locks on tight. And notice how it's relatively close when you have it in the compact position. Like this is like the stowaway position, in my, I would call it. But you can unscrew it, flip it over, <clears throat> get it lined up, and then it locks on. And that's in the you know use position, and it gives you the you know proper protection and um, you know angle of view to keep the sun off the lens, to, you know for optimal uh, clarity and whatnot. So you always want to use this. It's metal. So let me show you what this thing can do in the real world. I have a lot of pictures and I got some lab shots I wanted to show you for minimum focus distance testing, things like that, a bouquet test so you can see how the bouquet renders in the lab scene. All right guys, so here we are in Lightroom 5 and I just wanted to show you a couple of lab photos quick first. And this is just a wide open F2 shot and I just wanted to show you how it renders compared to F22 and notice the difference. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Over here, this is the lab scene. This is first taking it at F2, so wide open. And I wanted to show you the whole scene so you can see how this color chart here renders and you can see how the squares are starting to, you know, spread apart. And I also wanted to show you the corner sharpness. So you can see here it's pretty good quality. You can see the letters. You don't see any fringing, like purple fringing or anything like that. So not bad at all for wide open F2. And you can see the detail here in the bracelet. And of course in the center area, you got all that detail. And then the bouquet is very, very nice. More detail down here. Now you can see F2 sharpens up quite a bit compared to F2. And you can see F4 is just ridiculously sharp. Everything just tacked up uh, big time. So. so at F8, you could really see the quality and maximum sharpness that this lens has to offer. I mean, it's just incredible. That's what you would expect. All the hairs and whatnot on the detail. The contrast is so punchy, too. It's like the blacks are so black and the whites. It really is impressive. So moving on, here's F11. F16, F22, and I just wanted to show you F22 quick so you can see any kind of diffraction due to the angle of light heading in to the sensor, and you can see here it's quite good. You lose a little bit of sharpness, but overall still excellent in my opinion. So now going to minimum focus distance, I just wanted to show you what this looked like, and you can get some killer separation with a lens like this because it has a 12 inch approximate minimum focus distance which is borderline macro abilities so here it is at f2 and you can notice the bouquet nice and round looks killer nice and creamy and then at f2.8 you do have a little bit of sharpness here on the bouquet balls so that's worth noting it's not perfectly round and now this is f4 5.6 f8 and this is back to F2 here at minimum focus distance because I wanted to show you what it looks like when you're using this lens on a crop factor camera. And now, so this is F2 full frame mode, and this is F2 on a crop factor camera. So if you put this on the A6000, for example, and you were taking the shot exactly the same way in the same exact position, this is what it would look like on a full frame. Now, you put it on A6000 or something, boom, there you go. Something very close to that as far as the crop goes. Okay, so moving on to some real world photography, we're looking at, you know, just like this little sculpture thing I have sticking in the dirt in my driveway. And uh, I wanted to use this so you can see how the snow and the trees and the background render. And you could tell it this lens has that look. It's just like that killer quality look that you only get with, you know, very expensive lenses usually. Here's a little closer towards the minimum focus distance. And here's my microphone. Here's the net on my uh, boy Jace's pack and play. Let's see how much separation you get, it's awesome. Layla was pretty proud of her little uh, fish project there. Just notice the chandelier on the top right, um, how that renders, it's pretty cool. This is just a mop at work. I just like the way it looked, colors and whatnot. Here's some equipment, and I just wanted to show you how the LEDs render when, you know, doing a uh, perspective style shot like these. 
Here's some wires again. It's like a perspective style shot so you can see the depth of field fall off. And another one. Nice pine tree. And notice how it has like in the background. It's just like that magical look. Gotta love it. All right, so here's more of a test scenario type shot. This one here is at F2. And you could see at 100% crop, it looks really good. You could see the depth of field falling off to the left and the right, but still, overall, it's excellent. And here's the same exact shot, except at F4 this time. And you could see it tacks up, like, ridiculously sharp. Again, same shot, F8, and super sharp. Here's a couple of uh, icicle shots I wanted to show you. And this one came out pretty good, I thought, because the Jeep down here, you know, just the way it renders, you know what a Jeep's supposed to look like. And the way that the bouquet looks, you know, it's just, it's got that magical look to it, you know? It's just, it's awesome. You can't get this with a regular lens. It just doesn't look like that. It looks cool, but it doesn't look magical or whatever you want to call this bouquet effect. It's like that buttery, um, you know, it's just awesome. Look at these muffins. Oh, man. Michelle made these ridiculously good banana muffins, and uh, I ate about 10 of them probably. <laughs> But anyway, I thought the lens, you know, made these look ex exceptionally good. And here's some icicles looking outside. I told you I wanted to show you some icicle shots. Here's another one. And another. Here's one with the lights on behind it, so you can see how the bouquet renders. I thought that looked kind of cool for an effect. And this is just looking up the street. just wanted to give you a straight-up street shot with the snow and everything else. F8. Here's another one at F2 on the mailbox, and I'll zoom in so you can see what this looks like. You can see how it separates, and it was actually snowing, so you can see those little dots. This is just a tree in my driveway, and I converted it to black and white. We're actually having a black and white challenge on the forum here. If you go to the Sony Alpha Lab forum, we have a black and white photography challenge under the challenge area and that's why that image is black and white so there's a ton of good photos here by the way if you want to check it out see here it is and so many people have added photos it's it's pretty pretty awesome so let me just go back to Lightroom here and here's a shot I just wanted to show you out of focus versus in focus so you can see the difference alright so moving on I got this globe here it's pretty cool you know, I shook it up and spun it around and uh, had the shutter speed a little bit slow at a quarter second. So I was able to get the, uh, you know, a little bit of a motion blur effect. But more importantly, I just wanted to show you the way the TV and all this color and stuff in the background renders. Looks quite nice. Here's a balloon. It's Papa's birthday. You can see just how good that looks. Excellent. Uh, another one for the black and white photography challenge but check out the background you know the trees the way they bouquet it's just exceptional same thing with the balusters here they just look excellent we got an unbelievable amount of snow this year guys and I just wanted to show you this picture this is like literally two and a half feet at least right here and I had to shovel a path for bones it's just unbelievable how much snow we got but you know the lens does an excellent job I focused right here and you could see just how ridiculous ridiculous I mean it's just so crisp you know this is what you get when you spend this kind of money on a lens guys you, you really gotta just really pay attention to the quality that you're getting here and look at some of my other reviews and look closely at the details you'll see I mean it's it's night and day here's here's some olives I, I really don't like olives at all they're disgusting but the tomatoes and mozzarella was good and other people like olives so but I thought this made a pretty cool shot just you know the color contrast and whatnot these were napkins, and I just wanted to really illustrate the separation and minimum focus distance effects you can get with this lens. And this is at the minimum focus distance, and I put the lens right on basically or almost touching these napkins here on the bottom side. And then this is about 12 inches away, so there's the focus point. And then behind that, in the background, is a chair and, you know, the um, sliding glass doors. So I just wanted to illustrate how that looks. Here's a photo of Layla, and I converted it to black and white for the black and white challenge. We had a really good cherry pie that was <laughs> exceptionally good. It was like a black cherry pie. God damn, was it good. All right, and oh, yeah, we had some uh, Mexican um, appetizers as well. Other than the olives, it was fantastic. 
Layla got some do a dot art, and I thought that putting this at the slight angle there to show you the depth of field would be a cool effect in combination with the color. Just a wine glass. My uh, mom was drinking some wine, I guess. There's my mom holding Jace, my boy. Here's one of those markers that I was just showing you in this shot. So this is with the cap off. Let me just show you what this looks like at a close-up so you can see. Check that out. Looks really good. Very nice detail rendering. And notice the separation with a lens like this. Now 50 millimeter would be even better, but a 35 millimeter lens giving you this kind of separation at this distance is really cool. And you know, it makes for a fun experience and full frame gets you that separation. So it was my dad's birthday the other day and here's his birthday cake. I actually managed to get a decent picture of the candles flickering. I was pretty happy with this shot and you know, really bright harsh light like the flame is pretty tough on a lens and this lens renders it excellent as you would expect this is a shot from work I was actually working on a project and um, I had to take some pictures for it for the engineers but I figured why not use the Loxia lens and show this repeating pattern here so you can see how the depth of field and bouquet renders it was a pretty good subject for that and here's the wires on the back I had a wire up and you could see, you know, the way the colors go and whatnot. They look great. Nice contrast. Is this one here I edited. Check this out. Here's the raw file unedited. And I just want to zoom in so you can see what this looks like. So I was shooting at ISO 4000, but the detail is excellent and so is the sharpness. And when you zoom out, that's what you get. Now here's an edited version, fully edited. Went into Photoshop and uh, edited this and I just wanted to show you how it looks still a little bit noisy but you, you won't see this noise on a print and that's an example of you know just a really good edited image uh, in my opinion I like that shot here's another icicle with that Layla's little fort that you just saw in a couple of shots ago with the snow on the top and I just thought it was kind of a cool image for some reason all right, so this image here, I wanted to illustrate how you can see the lack of distortion. So if I hit the R key in Lightroom, it's going to bring up the crop tool. And now it, it might be hard to see, but you can see there's a grid showing up on the screen. And I wanted to bring up this grid so you can see just how straight this lens is. There's pretty much no perspective distortion at all or barrel distortion, pin cushion, things like that. You could see here it's the lines are straight, straight across the board so very high quality and what you would expect once again so this is a building called the Mediacom building and they just built this the guy who owns Mediacom I guess lives local and he decided to build the building close by so this is right near where I work and it's a, just a beautiful building so I just wanted to show you a couple of shots here what it looks like and it's like a, a metal finish, so the conditions are pretty tough for a uh, lens. I'll get some better pictures of it at some point. Here's another farm shot, and the snow is pretty bright. You can see the snow is looking a little bit blue here, but the farm itself is nice and warm. So I'll zoom in here so you can see the details. And you can see it looks quite good. Uh, I took a couple of shots at Bones, Bones Jones. This is the edited file. So let me just show you what this looks like. Zoomed in here so you can get a de and uh, get some detail on the eyes and the hair. And you can see it's exceptional. Really what you would expect for a lens. Here's another raw file. And here's the edited version. You can see. Brightened it up a little bit. I'll zoom in so you can see the eyes very sharp see the nose here the detail it's just crazy and I also converted one to black and white for the photography challenge and moving on got another one of bones here chewing on a stick there's my buddy and his little extra saucer and I converted a bunch to black and white for the challenge also this Gerber food is pretty sweet Jace loves it it comes with this you got this cool spoon and you can just squirt the food out and it goes right onto the spoon I mean how cool is that he was loving it. Look at him. He was starting to get a little full here. But um, I cheered him up. And he finished the whole thing. 
and it was kind of bloated. Look at him. <laughs> a little bit bloated feeling. But uh, anyway, bottom line is the lens. Look at this quality. It's like that's what you expect when you buy a lens like this. It's manual focus, you know, so you got to take your time and whatnot. Here's a shot of a heater. And I did this for the black and white challenge, but I like the way it came out. Looks pretty cool. Here's an old uh, Tektronix oscilloscope that I used to use back in the day. Haven't used it in a while, though. And again, for the black and white challenge, clarity is quite good. Layla had to go to dance class. That's her right here in the middle. This is Layla right here, and uh, she loves it. Here's a shot from outside. And here's a raw file right off the camera. And this one I edited slightly, black and white. Here's another shot. This is just looking down the deck stairs. Looking up the deck stairs. That's a snapshot. Here's a portrait of the metal man, which is down the road. And I wanted to show you just how sharp. Look at this. Incredible. But again, you know. This is what you expect when you pay this much money for a lens. So that's a good shot to show you the detail. Here's another shot from the same area. And let me just show you what the detail looks like on this. And it's tough because it's polyurethane, so it has all these bright spots. But just look how good it looks. None of that purple fringing, you know, on these highlights. You know, sometimes these bright spots, you see the purple and the green and all that. Nothing on a lens like this. Just looks good. So when you spend that kind of money, like I said, this is what you get. So testing the vignette, I just wanted to show you. This is f2, f2.8, f4, f5.6, f8. So you can see between f8 and f2, there's quite a bit of difference in vignette. All right, so one thing I wanted to mention was the lens cap. For, for some reason, it's plastic. I don't know why they included a plastic lens cap. In my opinion, it really should be metal. 1300 bucks. come on now. Everything else about the lens is absolutely top quality, though. But uh, I had to point that out. It's kind of disappointing, you know? The back of the lens cap, I could see that being plastic. But uh, this is used all the time, you know? So, But I guess they don't want you to scratch the lens. So plastic in that regard is better and safer. But on the RX-1, it comes with this killer, you know, metal lens cap. And I was kind of hoping that this would come with that. But uh, not the case. In any event, I really appreciate you guys checking out this review. And uh, I hope you have a good weekend, good week, and all that. So stay tuned, and we'll have uh, more reviews coming soon. There's a bunch of new lenses that came out for the full-frame E-mount camera system. And uh, I will be getting my hands on all of them as soon as possible. So... Right on. Catch up with you later.